Peggy 18. E3 is the biggest day in the gaming calendar where all the leading developers and publishers responsible for creating the games you love come together in LA to announce the games releases for the coming year. From EA and Microsoft through to Nintendo and Ubisoft, they're all there. The E3 2018 Expo took place between June the 12th to the 14th and as ever, it didn't disappoint. And here to tell us more about what we can look forward to is Rams from our pro gaming team. Great to have you with us. Pleasure being here as always. Pretty exciting expo this year, wasn't it? Loads to go through, but should we kick off with EA who were up first? Fantastic, and yeah, of course, EA always starts off the E3 Expo of conferences, and this time, again, we already sort of knew the games, including this one, Battlefield 5. I love this game, I love Battlefield. It's going back to 1942 roots again, but this time in HD, uh, which is awesome. But also, they're putting in Battle Royale. So this, again, Battle Royale has been a massive thing for 2018 which includes Fortnite and Battlegrounds, and now they've added their own mode. Fantastic. So what does Battle Royale actually involve then? What's that going to bring to the so game? So it's a last person standing. You have at least 100 people or so. I don't know how many people that EA are going to pull on the servers, but 100 people or so, and you've got to be the last person standing out of those, uh, out of those 100. What else did EA announce then? Because they had loads, didn't they? They did have loads, and again, with their usual sports updates of you know NFL and NBA titles, the basketball and the American football, FIFA. Yes, of course, FIFA. FIFA 19, and this time they've actually gotten one up on the, their rivals of, by taking the Champions League now into the actual game. So now they've got the rights, all the rights to Champions League. Awesome. So what's that going to mean for players then? What differences are they going to see from FIFA 18 and what's going to add to the game? So again, th there's not much that they've added in terms of you know the gameplay because again, if it's not broken, they don't need to fix it. And with, with FIFA, it's usually just little tidbits that you'll see like the skill sets and stuff like that. But with the Champions League, having that authenticity, playing with your own own team that you support and you know trying to win the Champions League with them, you know, who knows? It might, you know, could be one of the Manchester sides here, or even one of the League One sides in, you know, Antrim, maybe, or you know, Salford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't tell you who uh, who my team is, just in case. <laughs> um, all right, what else is coming out of the EA conference then? One of the bigger ones, though, was from last year, and this year was a bit more information on a game called Anthem. Now, Anthem is based on classes, based on the RPG slash shared world experience. So um, you have classes. Four classes at the moment. Uh, it's an interesting one. It's they, they haven't shown too much of it, but it, it's a story-driven one based on cooperate, cooperation, uh, playing with friends, playing with other people. Um, yeah, we're just gonna have to see how it comes out, really. But it looks good. It looks good because it's from the makers of Star Wars: The Old Republic and a few other ones. Never Winter Nights. So we'll see how it comes. Awesome. Anything else from EA before we move on? Yeah, there's one thing, it's not a game, but it's more of a subscription service. So we know that Origin Access has been around with EA for quite a while, uh, but they're trying to take on Sony's PlayStation Now and uh, Xbox Game Pass with Origin Access Premier. Yeah. Now this is to not just add the old games that you played in, in the past, but this is also the new one. So when the new ones like Anthem comes out, Battlefield 5 comes out, FIFA 19, you can instantly play them with Origin Access Premier. Amazing, and when's that on the rise and then do we have any more details around that? It's coming sometime this year, it's currently in beta right now, um, they're testing it with certain people but you know we're looking at this year, end of next year maybe. And so before we move on to Microsoft who are up next, anything else from EA's conference? Just a few little tidbits as well, again um, Battlefront 2, this was released last year in November, Star Wars Battlefront 2, now they're going to release some uh, DLC which is going to be based on the Clone Wars and everyone everyone who watched the series, watched the mini cartoon series The Clone Wars is going to be loving this where you get to play as like General Grievous, Count Dooku and many of the other characters in there. We've also got uh, Unravel 2. Now Unravel 2 is a nice indie game uh, where you feature a nice red character called Yanni but this time now he's got another, another Yanni who's blue and you're playing co-op as well. It's all based on yarn and you know string and you have to it's a nice little platform and another one for mobile this time, EA has been releasing Command and Conquer's Rival which is a similar to like Clash Royale, mm -hmm. so it's a bit of a competitive game there and then a bit of a, another one which is an EA original they call Sea of Solitude which is, it's kind of a weird one because this game is, it's 
similar to Hellblade in terms of mental health. Yeah. It's, it's, it's trying to deal with mental health issues. Yeah. And uh, you're on a boat where you're alone and you've got to fight off the monsters in the sea, which are part of your psyche. So it's fair to say EA have been really busy. Let's move over to Microsoft and we couldn't not start by kicking off with Halo Infinite. Oh, everybody wanted a Halo and they've got it now. Halo Infinite is going to be out on uh, Xbox One and Windows 10. This will be the first time that Halo has come out on Windows for many years since Halo 2 um, back in the day. So looking forward to it. Awesome. What else have Microsoft had up the sleeves? So an interesting one as well, they've, uh, from the developers of uh, Dark Souls. Dark Souls has been this one of these games where it's, it's a challenging RPG where you have to get through levels and beat enemies. But this time there's another one called Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, that they've been making. And similar to Dark Souls, you're in a, the Japanese feudal, feudal times, the samurais, the ancient warriors, and you have to you know, go through that. Similar to Dark Souls sort of area, and you have to try and uh, survive that as well. So it's going to be quite an epic game as that. Another big one, racing, Forza Horizon 4. Nice. And this time now, instead of Australia, we are now in the UK. So we are driving around in the UK and they're going to have dynamic seasons. So spring, oh. summer, autumn, winter are all going to come into effect each time you play the game. Ah, oh, nice, a little bit different there as well, isn't it? I'm a big fan of uh, racing games. Not that great, but I do like to play them, so that's exciting news for me. Anything else that Microsoft have been working on? Yep, so there was this one, there's this massive meme, so to speak, around on, um, in the gaming world because everybody's asking for a game called Skate. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of it. Skate. Tell us more, I haven't. No. So Skate is like similar to Tony Hawk's, you know, skating, pro skating, yeah. doing all those tricks, the stunts and stuff like that. We had an image, we had a video of it come in and we thought, oh, it's going to be Skate 4. Everyone's going to Skate 4. No, it's actually called Project Session. But it's similar. It looks similar to Skate 4. So if they can de okay. deliver to Skate 4, it will be the, the game that everybody wants. Bit of a curveball there, though, isn't it? Not quite what everyone was expecting, but still. It was. I mean, if, if you were watching Twitch at the time, everyone was going, Skate 4, Skate 4, Skate 4. And all you see was a long list of chat. But then it was Session, and it was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> like, so we'll wait and see, I guess, what the reaction from everybody is once it's uh, been released. Exactly, yeah. So we'll hope, hope for him big for that. But the other big release as well, Devil May Cry 5. Now, everybody enjoyed the Devil May Cry reboot, but Devil May Cry, the series with the original Dante and stuff like that, they all wanted it. Now they're getting it. So Devil May Cry 5 coming out from Capcom is going to be, it looked amazing in the trailer. It's just going to be very brutal. Um, coming there as well, another big game, Dying Light 2. Now this is, Dying Light was a fantastic survival game, but this time you can actually, you can run around the areas using free running, so parkour type running That's to get cool. away from zombies uh, in the first one. The second one you can do that as well, but you've got also humans that you have to deal with. So in the day, you have to deal with the humans. In the night, you have to deal with the zombies. So it's very... <laughs> non-stop action yeah amazing stuff anything else you want to talk us through before we move on two more and the two big ones gears of war has always been a massive franchise for microsoft Huge. and they brought out the funny thing was when watching the stream they brought out three gears games one for the mobile which is called gears pop so mm -hmm. everybody loves i guess most people love funko pops you know those oh, little yeah. statues so they're bringing out a mobile game with that gears tactics which is going to be a pc only um, sort of strategy game but then the big one that everybody wanted, Gears of War 5. And that's going to be out on Xbox One and Windows 10 as well. So uh, the trailer on that one looks epic. And we're going to see more of that in the near future as well. And then the last one, but it was the biggest announcement because nobody knew this was coming. At the end of the Microsoft uh, conference, it got hacked. Oh, wow. The whole of this stage got hacked and it went red. And everyone was going, what, what was this? What was yeah. this? We found out it was Cyberpunk 2077. This game being made by, it was being published and made by CD Projekt Red, the developers of The Witcher series. Yep. Lovely series, but now we're going to have Cyberpunk 2077. The trailer looks absolutely awesome. Can't wait for it. it. It was one of the biggest surprises in that conference itself. That's the nice thing about E3 though as well, isn't it? It's all about theatre, it's about getting people's attention. So that nice little curveball and, and it's certainly gotten people talking about Cyberpunk, it hasn't it? It was, it was fantastic and to be fair, Microsoft had over 50 games they announced and I'll, I'll just quickly go through some of them as well. Crackdown 3. 
Now this was announced last year's E3, it's been pushed back now again to February of next year. So again this game keeps getting pushed back but if you've, if you've seen Crackdown and you've played it, you'll love it. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, lovely platforming game, visually stunning, uh, plays very well, everything about it is superb. So that game's going to be awesome when it comes out. Sea of Thieves, this game didn't really bring out too much when it came out, but now they've announced some uh, downloadable content which will come out in the future. Uh, that's going to be two packs as well. One of the best games, platformers, Cuphead. Now, I know the video team have been talking about Cuphead quite a bit. I know when I talk to them, they love Cuphead. Who doesn't love Cuphead? Who doesn't love Cuphead? <laughs> but now they bring out a new DLC with new characters, new new maps, new enemies, it's going to be insane. And then, last but not least, Battletoads. Battletoads is a platformer fighter game that was back in the 90s and now they decide to bring it back uh, coming into hopefully 2019. They didn't show too much, there was only a little teaser trailer where you saw tongues from the toads just coming yeah. lashing in, lashing out, but you know, that was that. Um, I'm trying to think of it first. Oh yes, there's one more. I did forget there's one more. So, one of the bigger of announcements was a fighting game, um, anime. So, Dragon Ball Z. You've heard of Dragon Ball Z. Yep. You've heard of Naruto. You've heard probably of Naruto, yeah? yeah? So, all of these have now been combined into one fighting game known as Jump Force. So, you're going to get all of Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, One Piece, yep. Death Notes, and a few of us are going to be combined into one fantastic fighting game. Ah, worth checking out then. So, let's find out what Bethesda have been up to then. Ah yes, Bethesda. Of course, one of the games that they were going to announce was actually accidentally announced by Walmart yep. um, a few a few weeks before E3, which was Rage 2. Now, it's a single player game. Uh, you ever, ever seen Mad Max or ever heard of Mad yep. Max? Yeah, so it's Certainly based around have. in a post-apocalyptic world of Mad Max-ish type area okay. where you've got your guns and you, you, know, you have to survive and do quests and stuff like that. It's a single player uh, RPG and that's going to be coming out very soon, in the, later in the year. Excellent, okay, what else from Bethesda? Doom. Doom, Doom, Doom Eternal. So this time we had the reboot a few years ago of Doom, which was fantastic. Everybody appreciated it. Now we've got the, the next one in the, in, the, in the series called Doom Eternal. And this one now is actually from Hell. Hell has actually come onto Earth now. So through the portals, Hell has actually ravaged Earth and now as uh, the Doom Slayer, you need to try and fight them off and uh, you know, fight off all the demons and get them back into the portal. Sounds good. Um, Bethesda got anything else that they announced? Bethesda have also announced the new Wolfenstein, which is after Wolfenstein 2. It's going to be Wolfenstein Youngblood, and this is based on co-op play. So in Wolfenstein 2 and 1, sorry, I should say, both the Wolfensteins, you played as BJ uh, Blazkowicz. So that was the main character. But in Youngbloods, you play as BJ's young daughters, twin daughters. And this now they've tried to make this as a more of a cooperative uh, adventure as well. So that's going to be coming out uh, later on in the year. I say the biggest release that I thought it was going to be was Fallout 76. Now everybody's been going crazy about Fallout 76. Not um, It's been all over the place. Now I thought this was the biggest release, and I'll get to that afterwards. Okay. But Fallout 76, right? It's a prequel to all the Fallouts. Okay. It's four times bigger than Fallout 4 in terms of map size. Okay, so wow. It's based in West Virginia yeah. as well as the map uh, the map setting. But again, everything that you did in Fallout, previous ones, you get to do in Fallout uh, 76 plus more. Yeah. Also, there is online elements. There's also cooperative. Everything that you play in Fallout is gonna be always online. Excellent. So you get to play with friends this time for the first time. You get to do quests with them. It's gonna be the biggest co-op Fest, let's put it that way, of the Fallout games, of any Fallout, of any co-op games, it's going to be one of the biggest, because everyone loves Fallout and bringing co-op Absolutely. and getting your friends to play with you in sessions, it's going to be amazing. A lot of excitement around that, hasn't a lot of anticipation about what might actually, yeah, it's, it's been might see. Yeah, it's been awesome, everybody's loved it, and if you saw the conference itself, they had these little mini videos of the, the Pip-Boy, um, and it's worth looking, uh, worth going back and looking at, but we thought that was the big announcer. <laughs> that wasn't the big announcement. The yep. big announcement did come out at the end. But before I get to that, we had a little few other things with Elder Scrolls Legends. Yeah, yep. So this was a card game, free-to-play card game that is going to be on Nintendo Switch and everything else. Mm -hmm. It's been revamped. Elder Scrolls Online Somerset, which just come out uh, June. Mm -hmm. Well, it's this month, of course. And that's, um, that is the new expansion to Elder Scrolls Online. 
Prey, uh, which was released a few years ago. I think it was last year or two year before. They've got a new DLC coming out called Moon Crash, along with a new mode called Typhon Hunter, which is going to be a new multiplayer mode. Five versus one. So one of you is a human, the other one, the other five are Typhons, which can shapeshift into objects yeah. around. You have to hide from the human before you get destroyed, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Prey, and along with Prey and Wolfenstein, there's going to be VR. So we're going to have VR versions of Wolfenstein Yay. and Prey. Yeah, so Oculus and Vive users are going to be loving that as well. Along with all those announcements, the big announcement was held at the end. We finally get a new Elder Scrolls. So after Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Elder Scrolls VI is coming, but they didn't show what it was called, well, what it was going to be like. They only showed a 10 second trailer of a name, Elder Scrolls VI. Everyone went ballistic. It was yeah, Elder yeah. Scrolls. Everyone just went, hey, why? And that was it, <laughs> yeah. done. Yay, you've given us what we want. Yeah. Bethesda won. They teased us. Bethesda won E3, that was it. Done. Yeah. So that was Bethesda at the end. Fantastic. Wow, amazing stuff from Bethesda there, like you say. Um, still plenty more to talk to. We're literally a third of the way through announcing these games, aren't we? So moving on, and I think it's fair to say that Devolver Digital delivered their announcements in quite a quirky way, didn't they? Yeah, where to start with this one? <laughs> I mean, this was only a 20-minute conference. It was all pre-recorded. Yeah. It's not live like Microsoft uh, did theirs and EA. It was all pre-recorded for 20 minutes. They only announced a couple of games. Um, one of them they announced weeks ago, which was Serious Sam 4. Um, again, Serious Sam 4, I love that. It's a very brutal co-op game. Lots of lots of enemies coming at you, just hordes of enemies. Just comes at you, just rushes you, and you have to kill them, of course. But the main games that they announced, of course, along with this, was uh, Scum, open world battle royale in a prison format. So it's like it's it's kind of a weird one. So you're you're in prison. You're released out into this open world, you have to survive. If you don't survive, you get turned into a zombie uh, or, or something like that. Anyway, it's a quirky game from Devolver Digital. But speaking of quirkiness, there was one called uh, My Friend Pedro. I was thinking, when this came out, I was like, what is this? And it's like, there was a talking banana. I, I like, love okay. the sound of this one already. Talking banana, but it's actually a two and a half D. So 2.5 D side scrolling. Shoot 'em up, but yeah, it's going to be on Nintendo Switch and PC uh, in a, sometime this year. And finally, there was a remake of a game, Metal Wolf Chaos. Now, this was out on the original Xbox many years ago. Just corny, corniest game you'll ever see. <laughs> corny, I love that word. It's just, uh, I don't know how much. It's best to go see the trailer yourself and just have a look at it. It's just one of those. But it's, um, you know, again, Devolver is one of those developers who is based on quirkiness and based on just yeah. being fun and being weird yeah but sometimes that actually does work out weird in a good way we like them talking bananas what's not to love eh? <laughs> okay let's move on then and next up we've got so we're looking at next uh, square enix and uh, again massive publishers uh, one of my favorite games which we'll come to next but one of the biggest releases uh, of this year for them is going to be shadow of the tomb raider uh, again, Lara Croft, we, we've known, loved her for many years uh, on the PlayStation 1 when she was all blocks and pixelated yeah, and now yeah. into this fine form that she is right now. And it is, uh, and again, it's a lovely sort of uh, RPG, again, very survival mode type RPG, and that's going to come out around September time. So it's going to be awesome to see. One of the other games as well, which is a nice fun game, um, it's based on the Life is Strange universe and it's called The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. Now you take control of a young child um, and you're living like adventures through his eyes, like, like imagination and unique worlds and stuff like that, but through his eyes, as um, imagination as a kid. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be, it's actually going to be free at the end of June Amazing. as well. So free to play at the end of June, you can download it. I mean, it does look amazingly fun. Nice bit of escapism. Like you say, sometimes the stresses of every day, it's nice to kind of lose yourself in a game like that, isn't it? And just kind of live through a kid again, having adventures. Exactly, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so some of us, some of us was like, oh, I wish we were back at school. And I, <laughs> this is probably the time to do it. Yeah, probably time to relive. Except he's not at school, he's on epic adventures. Yeah, he's on he? epic adventures, yeah. He's Amazing. Going, yeah, so he's uh, all through his imagination. One to get. I hope so. Yeah, as is, is free, and Square Enix are giving it free, so it is one to get. Fantastic. Okay, plenty more from Square Enix as well, isn't there? What, what else did they know? Yeah, so, just cause. Just Cause, we've known, um, is a action sandbox RPG. You play the role of Rico uh, Rodriguez, um, and you're part 
and it's on an island, whether it's like somewhere in uh, the Caribbean, like Havana or Cuba or somewhere like that. I'm not sure the setting this time, but you're on again another big island. You're stopping criminals again from taking over the 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 country. But this time you've got a bit of new added effects of it where weather plays it affects tornadoes and hurricanes and stuff like that plays wow. into effects. You can do some serious flying around or serious. Everything that you've played with Just Cause 4 is in this plus more. So that's going to be another addition to the series. A big one for me personally is Final Fantasy 14. Now this is the MMO that has been out for many years. They've recently uh, added Stormblood, which is one of the expansions. Mm -hmm. But this time they've done a crossover with another developer, which is Capcom. Okay. So and Interesting. one of the big games that Capcom have brought out of this year was Monster Hunter World. And now they decided that Capcom and Square Enix are going to do a crossover between Final Fantasy XIV and Monster Hunter World. What that means is, one of the monsters from Monster Hunter World is going to come into Final Fantasy. One of the monsters in Final Fantasy is going to go over to Monster Hunter. Oh wow, I love this. So it's a massive crossover from two different types of companies, but yeah. still really good friends. Uh, and it was a big shock as well in terms of that, because nobody expected that. Nobody yeah. expected a crossover to come like that. Because Capcom have done additions to Monster Hunter based on their own games, yeah, yeah. whether it's a Street Fighter or Devil May Cry, nobody expects them to cross over to another... Yeah, I like it, it keeps us on our toes, it keeps us surprised and it's exactly why we're talking about it today, isn't it? Yeah. Interesting one to look out for, I like that. Yeah, so that's going to be interesting for like, everybody who plays that game, including myself, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest ones though from Square Enix is Kingdom Hearts. So Kingdom Hearts is a game where, it's an RPG where you play as uh, a character along with Disney characters, so Goofy, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, they all come and help you as well. So Kingdom Hearts 3 is a new addition where now you're in the frozen world yeah. and you're in the Pirates of the Caribbean as well and among other worlds as well. But this is the first time that Kingdom Hearts will be on the Xbox. It's always been on the PlayStation, I don't think it's been too much on the PC, maybe the old edition but the new one is now for the first time Xbox users are going to be playing the game. Amazing. And what's not to love about Goofy helping you out? Oh, Goofy, <laughs> Donald, <laughs> Do Donald, <laughs> Donald, he gets mad at, you know, you yeah. know, you want to see him jumping up and down and being in his tantrum, <laughs> you know. Um, just a quick few ones as well. There's another game that was a bit of a teaser called The Quiet Man. Mm -hmm. Now it seems like it's a similar to Detroit Become Human, where it's based on quick time. So you have to press buttons in succession or you have to press them at the right time otherwise you'll fail it yeah, yeah. so it's uh but it was based off a it looks like it was a, a person who is deaf who can't hear anything but is a fighting he's fighting he's doing he's doing fighting with gangs and stuff like that from what we saw from the teaser anyway and then uh one coming out for the xbox is near automata this has already been out for the ps4 and the um, pc but now Xbox users are going to get the first time to play Nier, which is a, an award-winning game from Square Enix, and finally, yeah, Microsoft will get their hands on it. So let's find out what Ubisoft have been up to, and I know Assassin's Creed Odyssey was a biggie for them. It was a huge one. Again, it was announced, uh, it was teased a few weeks ago, a few months now probably, but then now we've got a first showing of it. It's based now in the sort of Greek era, um, and this time is the first time you can play either as a man or a woman. Yes! So, Fantastic, loving the sound of that one. What else did Ubisoft reveal? So last year was a big announcement for Ubisoft as they announced uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Now that was the biggest one out of Ubisoft last year. This year they got to show us a bit more. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is a prequel to the first one, um, which was made many years ago. And the biggest shock that we had, because it, it wasn't gameplay, it wasn't really gameplay. You did see gameplay like afterwards like during E3 but during the trailer it was mostly cinematic and we got to see the original character Jade uh, come back into this one but she was more evil she was more of a, a badass so to speak in this one yeah so and it, yeah you have to see the trailer but yeah so she's more of a badass in this one and now we get to find out why she's bad Okay, we love a badass, don't we? Yeah. So we will be keeping our eyes peeled open yes. for that one. And, that, and that's all good, but again, let's go and we'll go back with Ubisoft's main sort of uh, category of games, which is Trials. Mm -hmm. So Trials, again, so they always bring out a new one every sort of two years. This time they've got a new one called Trials Rising, which uh, adds on to Trials Fusion. 
Um, again, if you've played that before, it's all about like stunt riding and getting up little obstacles and finishing tracks and it can be very painful at times because there are, you know, you've got the easy tracks which is fine, most people get past them, then the medium ones, then it gets harder mm -hmm. to harder and then the extreme ones which nobody can get past the start like me. <laughs> so <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Well, I tried this the other day with some friends and um, yeah, I didn't get past the start at all. It took, it took us five minutes before we went. <laughs> So we give this up as a bad job. Yeah, and that and that was that. But yeah, new trials is coming out. It's going to be more epic as well. Supercross is going to come into so eight players on the screen at once, racing against each other online. More trials, uh, tracks in the tournaments, track central. You get to make your own. It's going to be more hectic with trials rising. Sticking with sort of racing is the Crew Two now, which is released at the end of June. Um, the Crew Two is more focused now, not on story anymore. This time you're all about winning and winning competitions, being the top dog, but it's not just about cars anymore. It's cars, it's off-roading, it's flying planes, wow. it's boat riding. You can do that with, cooperatively with friends as well. Amazing, do it all, mix it up a bit. I like the sound of that one. Um, anything else from Ubisoft? The Division 2. The Division 2. The Division was such a major game where the little background of it, a virus hit New York, it's eliminated or wiped out basically all of the population. There was only a few that lived on. Uh, and then there was gangs that were made up uh, that were taking over parts of New York. And then you had to stop them as a division agent, as a secret division agent. You were like a, um, a sleeper cell, so to speak. Sleeper cell division agents to stop what was happening in the city. This time around, Again, Division 2 is now based in Washington, so we've gone even bigger now. The capital has been destroyed, uh, Washington DC, the capital building itself looks all in grassy roots, uh, everything's overgrown, looks phenomenal, bigger area than New York this time, um, and we get to explore and see what happens there as well. So not much of the story has been said, but again, being set in DC, we can sort of probably you can imagine just how yeah. epic it's going to be. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones is a pirate sort of pirate uh, multiplayer uh, game where it's based off Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, you get to sail in the boats, but this time Ubisoft said, oh, let's take that part of it and let's make it into a full game. So they did. So it's now it's a multiplayer clash between boats and pirates and crews. It's, it's similar to like Sea of Thieves a bit, but much more action-packed. Amazing, they've thrown everything in there by the sounds of it, haven't they? They have thrown everything, and speaking of throwing everything in as well, we go back to For Honor. Now, this was a fighting game that they are now released a few years ago, which is all based on like the Samurais, the Vikings, and the, knight, the Templar Knights and stuff like that. And you can control them via, you know, certain actions, you know, really uh, unique actions and you can defend, you can attack and you had to use like if you had a gamepad you can use the wiggle stick and it was all good it was all good but the started to be a bit you know end game was not there mm -hmm. until now we've got new expansion called March in Fire which is now going to bring in the Chinese uh, sort of fighters as well so Lubu and all those ancient warriors in there are going to come in into Mar March in Fire Amazing. Wouldn't it just be great to be able to work on these storylines for games? I mean, would that not be the dream job? It, it would be fantastic. I mean, you know, if you have the imagination, unlike me, I don't have no imagination. I'm pretty whatsoever. sure if we locked ourselves away in a room, we could come up with a great title. Oh, what do you think? I, I, maybe yourself, me, me. I, I, I just rather play. <laughs> You're I, being I, very I, modest. I, I, I'm, no, I'm, I'm being truthful. I have no imagination whatsoever. I just play it. Uh, awesome. You know, but a little few things as well. Ubisoft did announce Just Dance. We have a new Just Dance for this year. Yeah. Yes. Every year they announce it. We've got 2019, yeah. I know, you, I know you'll be getting your dancing, uh, dancing shoes on for that one as well. It's a good fun one to play with friends. It's, it's the kind of thing that comes out at Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You get grandma playing and little ones playing. It's just a nice game that brings everyone together. Yeah, but it's, it's, good, it's good like that as well. But it's also a good exercising tool to do. If you don't want to do normal exercise, sit-ups and press-ups, yeah. stuff like that, this is a perfect alternative to have, you know, in, in your room and just you know burn off the carries. I love it and now we all know how Rand keeps in top shape. Just dance. Is that what you do at home? Just a bit yeah. Yeah I'm a, I'm a Just Dance fan yeah. One of, you know one of my favourite songs was uh, Skrillex. That was... Really? Yeah. You like? Wow amazing. Yeah, so. Do you actually play Just Dance just before we move on? I do intrigued. play Just Dance yeah. Do you really? Yeah I do. That's uh, incredible. I guess we'll have to do a stream of that at some point here at the there Scan you go. Studios. You heard it here first. Um, I'll take you on. Oh <laughs> yeah that, that's a, that would have to there be. There you go. 
We'll, uh, we'll work on that one for work you. Work on that one. So a few little things before we end with Ubisoft's course. Mario and Rabbids, massive announcement last year when they brought that out. The, the com combination of having the Rabbids and Mario World put together. Yeah. This time we're going to have Donkey Kong join yes! the, the fray. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that was like one of the first games that I ever played. It yeah. is amazing. Do you remember those little, they flipped open and then you yes. go through the level. Love it. Okay. Yeah, so Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong is Kong now Kong. coming into this now. Donkey Kong Adventures for DLC. That's going to come into it and we're going to see him and a few new enemies and new allies as well Amazing. in that game. So another big one as well, we haven't mentioned, it's a one, it's called Transference. It's a VR game. Now VR games, uh, it can be, this one's a bit awkward at the moment because they haven't said much about it. It's based on uh, a scientist and his family. His family have all passed on. It's just a scientist by himself. but. The family's memories are in the VR world, oh, that is oh, wow. and you have to, yeah, you have to try and figure it out and help out the family and stuff like that. It's a bit, it's a bit weird, but you have to watch the the trailer into it. But Elijah Wood is the one who's actually helping develop the game. Really, that's interesting. I love the sound of it. I mean, I really like VR. I know that it's probably not quite as mainstream as as it perhaps will be in the future, but. A good VR game to me is just amazing. And the idea of kind of trying to find through people's memories is yeah, just it, awesome. It, it will get there. It will get there eventually VR. But, you know, games like this and when you got superstars like himself, superstar actors like himself doing yeah. these sort of games, trying to produce games. That's amazing. You know, so it's going to be one to watch for from his side of it and Ubisoft as well. And then another one as well, um, Starlink Battle for Atlas. Now, this is a unique one because the game itself, you, you fly around in space and you can, you know, you sh it's a shoot 'em up in space uh, with ships, uh, airplanes and stuff like that. But you actually got to use toys to actually construct your ships. So you have to buy toy, external toys which connect to the either the PC via USB okay. or, or PS4 or Xbox One or the Amiibo stuff via Nintendo Switch. And you actually transfer that ship the into the game so the toys itself the like skylanders oh wow basically. yes so skylanders it's and you transfer that that info into the game oh fantastic that's good just kind of a little bit different isn't it yeah i mean again we had skylanders which you had the toys which transferred the toys mm -hmm. to the game now we're going to have that with starlink as well let's move on to pc gaming show what did they announce yeah so pc gaming show um always we've had it for the last few years now it's always run by uh pc gamer the magazine and you know the editors there this time around, it just showcased what PC games, what indie games as well was coming out. Uh, one of the big ones was Mavericks. Mavericks is a battle royale slash MMO where this time a thousand players has to be, and one has to be last man standing. Wow. Yes, yeah, so a thousand player battle royale. I uh, don't know how it's going to work in terms of server reach. Yeah. They did have a discussion about it uh, at the show, but again, more details will come in future for that one. It's going to be enclosed alpha i think soon okay so i have to check out the site on that next one of course is a game that's already been out uh, for a while warframe but it's their new dlc called sacrifice again free to play game of more cinematic this time so uh that's gonna be fun a fun game and i was speaking to the uh, the editors earlier was a game called man eater Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's that even called? No, no, okay, don't don't worry about it. It's not it's not what you think out there. But Man Eater, you actually play <laughs> as a shark. Oh okay, like it already. Yeah, you're right, you play as a shark and this time you're actually uh, going around trying to eat people from piers, from the sea, from scuba diving. You're you're actually the shark itself trying to be the predator eating the prey. And you can actually <laughs> you can actually improve the shark by getting bigger teeth. Bigger fins, you can, like in experience, oh, like like yeah, yeah. upgrade it, and it's like so. That's what that's a quirky game there from the makers. I like the sound of, of Man Eater. <laughs> it's, the, it's the makers of a uh, Killing Floor who make uh, another fantastic game there. One of the games that have just been released this month as well, Jurassic World Evolution, which is a strategy stroke uh, build simulation game where you build your own theme park around dinosaurs, uh, real life dinosaurs. So if you watched Jurassic World before, how they done their theme park and all that, you get to be that person that designs your own sort of theme park around dinosaurs, the, your own world around dinosaurs. Love it! What's not to love about Jurassic World? Let's be honest. I don't know. <laughs> I don't You're know. not a fan, obviously. No, right I, I haven't street. watched it. I don't, don't kill <gasps> me. I right, OK, we'll have, to have a we'll have to have a movie day here as well, just after the dan Just Dance competition. After the Just Dance, we'll have a movie we'll after, yeah. So, uh, another big game, though, um, is it called Two Point Hospital. Now, this is the, this is the 
spiritual successor towards Theme Hospital that was released many years ago, where you had your own hospital and you had to build and you had to build certain rooms, like SimCity. And then the patients have weird diseases and viruses that you have to try and you know conquer and stuff like that. And it's just it's one I would get actually, it's just to you know see what sort of quirky viruses and diseases and you know all sorts of things that yeah. they got. I can see your face light up. You like the sound of that one, don't you? It's alright because I, saw, I actually saw I actually saw it. And there was one. There was a there was a bit called someone a patient had turtle head where their head kept shrinking and shrinking and shrinking they did. and yeah and, and you had to find out how to stop <laughs> turtle head from happening before you know there you go yeah it's, it's not it's not the other thing that most people i was gonna say i didn't think we'd be using the phrase turtle head yeah unfortunately, unfortunately that's in the game as well so you can but see how you, you can see how funny the game is with that one as nice. well one of the other funny games as well it's from the makers of a Cyanide and Happiness called Rapture Rejects. Okay. Now, if you don't know what Cyanide and Happiness is, you need to have a look at it. It's a, it's a, it's a comic based sort of a satirical type uh, comic. And they made a game out of the characters for this one. It's basically a battle royale again uh, feature. It was a bit of swearing, but it was bleeped out. You know, it's, it's how it, you knew what was said, basically. Yeah. But it was. Uh, you got the idea. It was kind of funny. I mean, again, I showed the editors that one, and he was laughing his butt off on that one. So uh, he's referring to us because we've got a lot of gamers working yeah, the editing suite yeah, here. They, they? Yeah, they they love games, and you know, after I showed them the whole list of what happened at E3, they was like, okay, so. Uh, biggest game though, biggest game, or two of the biggest games, I should say. The first one we'll start off with Overkill's The Walking Dead. Now, Overkill's The Walking Dead, it's similar to Left 4 Dead, which has been released by Valve many years ago, still a fan favorite of most, but now it's based on The Walking Dead sort of books and the series as well. And then one of the big ones is Hitman 2. Yeah. It's a Square Enix game, but they decided to show it in the PC gaming shows. Yeah, it's interesting that, isn't it? What were the reasons for that? Um, maybe it just didn't have time or they just had exclusivity. Yeah. But Hitman 2, as we know, you know, the bold headed agent, I think it's Agent 47, if I'm right, barcode on his head. You get to be him once more. Um, and, you know, you have to take it, you have to assassinate your targets. So, and in different formats as well. In the trailer, you get to assassinate someone with a fish. Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Because that happens every day. Yeah, yeah, assassinate someone with a fish and then hit someone with a frying pan. So you name it. And, there's a lot of cosmetics as well in there, so a lot of vanity, a lot of cool things that you can dress yourself up in and yeah, yeah. kill people with. It's the beauty of gaming though, isn't it? It doesn't have to be true to life really, does it? Let's be honest. Yeah, and, and you know, that was pretty much for the PC game show. But it's, again, there was a lot more games there, but those were the ones that we highlighted on because again, not all of them, like there were somewhat indie ones, but they're not the bigger ones. Cool, okay, let's move on to Sony. Yep, Sony, another big hitter along with aside with Microsoft. Again, they didn't have many games this time along with Microsoft, as Microsoft did, but they focused on their main attractions, and one of them was The Last of Us 2. The Last of Us has been a fantastic game for them, in you know, made by Naughty Dog. Brilliant game. Last of Us 2 looks even more epic as well, where you play as Ellie, who's a bit more older now. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to the, the father in this one, because you played as the father in, and the daughter in the first one. But this time he just plays the daughter. Right. Not sure what happened to him but this one, but we'll find out. We'll find out when we it comes to it. Out. But it looked more, it was more brutal than ever. Really? Um, you know, there was a there was a scene as well which some people didn't like. It was a controversial sh scene. If you watch it on Twitch, a lot of people were going crazy. But that's Twitch for you anyway. Mm -hmm. But it looks to be a fantastic game from Sony itself. Another game which is kind of weird right now is a game called Death Stranding. Now this has the star of one of the stars of War The Walking Dead, Norman Reedus. Now he's been uh, put in there CGI. You know, his face has been put in there CGI. He looks phenomenal. It's from the maker. It's from the maker of Metal Gear, the first few Metal Gears, Hideo, Hideo Kojima. So, but he left Konami to make his own production, Kon um, Kojima Productions. So that's his own company, and he's making this game with Norman Reedus and a, a few other stars who have been put in there CGI faces and everything it looks phenomenal Amazing. not sure what it not sure what it looks like not sure what the sort of story is towards it um, it was very weird because you see Norman walking across massive vast landscapes and then these enemies or these these enemies you can't they can't see you you can't see them until they put their footprints on the floor ah, okay. and then the only time they can see you is when you're making noise and if you make a noise that's it they can grab you it's, it, but they're invisible as well, so it's it's a weird trailer. It's one to go have a look at. Um, it's been announced for more than a year, but nobody still knows what it's about. Mm. It's got to be living the dream, that though, isn't it? That your face features in a game in CGI. 
Yeah, and, and it's a game that will last forever. That's the thing. It's like, you know, some people will watch a film and put it down and they won't see it again. With a game like Death Stranding or many other games that most actors have been in, it's there forever. I know. So that's got to be a real pinch me moment, hasn't it? That your face features in a video game. Faces, voices, you name it's it. Amazing. It's amazing. It's just awesome. Living the dream. They are indeed. And <laughs> again, along with what that release, another big release that's coming out in September, Spider-Man. Now, yeah. everyone has been crazy about it, how it's You're looking, okay. yeah. um, the actions you could do. It is Everyone similar to like Devil May Cry, but in Spider-Man style, you know, hopping, a, hopping around, crawling around, <laughs> web slinging, you know. Hopping around, I love it. Well, he, he's, he's, he's hopping around, you know, he, he, he's dodging. Old fashion. He's old fashioned, he's, dodg he's dodging uh, uh, quite a lot there. But yeah, so great game that's coming out in September and yeah, a lot of pre-orders for that one already, Absolutely. Myself, myself included. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one as well, a little bit of Spider-Man. Yeah, another game, uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, it's a very hard one to pronounce because it's got a silent T, Tsushima. Yeah. But it's based around, again, Japanese feudal times, your samurai, um, and it's around when the Mongols mm -hmm. were attacking Japan at the time. You're a samurai and you have to, you know, take care of them and you have to well, you have to be away from stealthy because you're, you're a ghost, basically. Um, a lot of it, a lot of good action was shown in the trade of itself. Um, the sword fighting, the acting as well. Really look forward to it as well. So yeah, a lot to come with that one. Absolutely, loads there from Sony. And last but not least, the biggest surprise, and it scared the hell out of me on this one, was the remake of Resident Evil 2. Wow. So Resident Evil 2, we knew it was sort of coming because there were fans that were trying to remake the Resident Evil games. Mm -hmm. But Capcom went, hang on, you know what? We can make this even more scarier. So let's make it more scarier. So uh, they showed us the trailer and it blew, every everybody went wild in the crowd. Even on, even on Twitch chat was going, Resident Evil 2, wow. holy cow. Yeah. It's a new way of looking to it. So from the old Resident Evil, you had to look from it from bird's eye, isometric views, uh, room views basically from the top. This time around, you're over the shoulder. Wow, so how completely put Completely different. The zombies, again, as technology gets better, you know, the graphics get better, the zombies look insanely scary. Um, what if you love Resident Evil games, it's one to get. If you hate Resident, games, Resident Evil games and scared of them like I am. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I'll be staying away from that one. I'll be watching it on Twitch, but with, 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 <laughs> with a, a cushion. Pillar, yeah, with a cushion, just going like this. I'll, I'll be peeking in and out just quickly. Uh, but. Yeah, that was the, one of the biggest draws along with Last of Us 2 was that remake. Everyone just went not, nuts. Absolutely. Okay, and let's round up then with the almighty Nintendo. What were they saying? Ah, Nintendo, one of my favourites right now. Uh, playing on the Switch as they brought out. Playing it so much. Xenoblade Chronicle 2, one of my favourite games. It's a Japanese role-playing game. Um, they're bringing out their new one, well, DLC, I'll say. New content called Torna, the Golden Country. So it's going to be out in a few months time. Again, if you, it's a long, it's a long window. You got to put like at least 100 hours in. It's, 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 yeah. one, it's a long, a lot RPG. of commitment required. It's a lot, lot of commitments, but it is a lovely game once you get into the story and stuff like that. One of the biggest draws though was Pokemon. Finally, we're getting Pokemon on a Nintendo Switch with two versions. Let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee. Um, again, two versions where you can play. There you're starting, of course, Pokemon, where you're either Pikachu or Eevee. And again, it's similar to the Pokemon that we have on the 3DS, like Sun and Moon and Red and Blue and all those sort of Pokemon stuff like that. But now we're getting on the Nintendo Switch. So awesome. that's going to be coming out in a few months' time. It's a watch. It is one to watch, and every Pokemon. I, I think I've had a few friends going, oh, Pokemon, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this. I'm it's gonna... a guilty pleasure, isn't it? I think for a lot of people. I mean, lots of people are out there and big Pokemon fans, but you, you sometimes surprise yeah. people. Yeah, it's, it's so fantastic, but the cool thing about it is that if you have Pokemon Go, you can transfer data from the Pokemon Go on your mobile to the Switch. Oh, okay, that is and interesting. Vice, and vice versa as well. Okay. So, so they're doing so much around now. You get your own, you got your own Pokeball as well. They've actually developed a Pokeball controller. So wow. where you can uh, actually control, throw, you know, like imagine throw, you know, with these, the sensors of the, the Joy-Cons and the, to actually think that you're actually throwing a Pokeball to capture a Pokemon as well. So they've built that uh, and that's going to come out around the end of the year sometime uh, soon as well. Another game that I'm looking forward to is Overcooked 2. This is a sort of fun cooking game. Uh, it's usually couch co-op in the first one. This time they're bringing it online. So online Overcooked is going to be hilarious <laughs> because you have to cook, you have to cook like burgers and stuff like that, but you have to, you have to do 
bit by bit. So you have to have a lettuce, you have yeah. to have the bun, you have to have you have to cook the, very the precise. steak. You have to be very precise, but there's four of you in the kitchen, you have to keep passing Amazing. each other. So but this the first one was never online. And people were going mad because they wanted it online. It looked so fun, but you had to play with friends yeah, at yeah. home on a couch. This time online access is gonna be hilarious. Not just on Nintendo, but it's going to be on all platforms as well. Oh, brilliant. That does sound good fun. Yes. Uh, You're a big fan of that one. Oh. <laughs> Love a bit where, of Where I'm with my friends, it's like, let's play some Overcooked. I, 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 they're, they're ordering me to cook the burgers. I'm ordering them to get the lettuce. It's all good fun. It's all good. It? It's, all good. It's, all, it's all crazy fun with Overcooked. And it's good if you have a nice, like, nice bunch as well. Yeah. It can get hectic and it can get a bit fiery as well. Oh, I'll say, yeah. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, so to say. <laughs> uh, what else then have we got from Nintendo? Fortnite. So Fortnite has actually come onto Nintendo Switch. Ah, okay. Yeah, so now we've had a, uh, it's been out on PC, it's been out on Xbox One, it's been out on PS4 for quite a while, and now Switch gets their own version of Fortnite. And you can actually play with PC people and um, Xbox One people for, with the Switch. You can't do crossover with uh, PS4 right now. It's all, it's all to do with the, you know, the companies themselves of course, granting yeah. access. But yeah, so you could do crossover play with that as well, similar to Rocket League, which does crossover play. So that's fantastic for them. But the biggest announcements, which took basically all of Nintendo's um, conference, was Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, this game everyone has been riding on about for years. It's like, when is Nintendo going to bring this out to the Switch? Finally, we got our answer, E3, need to bring it out. And so it's similar to the Wii U version, the graphics and everything, which was fine, but they didn't know what characters were going to be on there. Nintendo went, you know what? We're just going to give you everybody. So everybody- <laughs> Have them all. Have them all. <laughs> so every character that was played on from the Nintendo 64, from Melee wow. to Brawl, to, uh, to the 3DS versions, to the Wii version, to the Wii U version, everybody there. is there. Oh, nearly 70 characters of fighting pleasure. Wow, okay. So how's that going to work then? So you, you have to unlock them, of course. Oh, okay. So you, right. get, you start off with eight, but you yeah. unlock, a, unlock each of them uh, with progress. different objectives and stuff like that. Yeah. But there's nearly, nearly 70 characters and there's still more to come as well, which cool, is isn't it? even more ridiculous. Um, we got our first scene of it on the trailer. Looks similar to the Wii U version, so everyone knows what it's about. Just a few more additions to it where it's like graphical and uh, move additions and stuff like that, like fighting moves, I should say. But it looks absolutely phenomenal. Um, and that will be coming out at 7th of December. I've already marked my calendar on, that's why I know the date of it. <laughs> 7th of December. Big red ring round yeah. that one. Literally, it's going to be Smash. And I think for a whole lot of people who have got a Nintendo Switch, it's going to be Smash Brothers Ultimate on that day. And it's a great Christmas present as well. Fantastic. Well, listen, we have literally bombarded people with information there. We haven't really, well, we scratched the surface, but literally only just scratched the surface. Plenty more titles as well, isn't there? Indeed. So you can check that out. I'm going to put you on the spot though now. What were you most excited about? I think there, Smash, Smash from Nintendo, Fallout from Bethesda, uh, Force Horizon and Gears, and a few more from Microsoft. Everybody had their surprise. Capcom, again, with Resident Evil 2 for Sony, everyone had something to give this time around. Um, it was a fantastic one. Nothing, and that's the thing, nothing was based on uh, hardware. So we didn't see a new Xbox, we didn't see a new PlayStation, we didn't see a new Nintendo. We just saw games, and that's what E3 was about. It was purely games, and everybody came out, out of the, out of the blocks. Yeah, let the games do the talking, as they say. And I will hold you to that Just Dance challenge. High five. Thank you very much, Ram. Great to have you in the studio. I hope you found that helpful. And don't forget, we sell all of your gaming gear here at scan.co.uk. Make sure you're ready for all these awesome releases, and we'll see you here again soon.